Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate seismic loads according to the equivalent lateral force procedure in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In the series of videos that are associated with this course, we are showing you three separate workflows for you to be able to successfully incorporate all of the requirements for generating your seismic loads according to the IBC equivalent lateral force procedure, including being able to add the effects of accidental eccentricity and orthogonal effects if required. The workflow that we're going to be highlighting in this particular training class is to show you how you can incorporate your orthogonal effects into your STAD Pro model through the use of repeat loads. Now we're using the same exact sample model that we've used in the previous videos associated with this class. All of the geometries, properties, specifications, and supports have already been created. If we proceed on to the loading page within your page control area, we're going to go ahead and expand our load case details section and our definitions section. Now for this class, we're going to notice that our first and second step in our workflow have already been completed, which means that we've already created our seismic definition and we've already defined our seismic mass of our structure. You're going to also notice that our seismic definition has been specified to include accidental eccentricities. Then if we look down to our load case details section, we're going to notice that our basic seismic loads have already been created for our seismic loads in the positive and negative x and z axis directions with also the effects of positive and negative eccentricity. So we're basically picking up where the last video left off and for this model we're going to assume that we also want to include our orthogonal effects. So what we're going to notice is that we've created some additional load cases in our sample model to successfully model that type of scenario. Now when you're considering orthogonal effects, basically what you're doing is we are counting on 100% of the seismic load acting in one of our horizontal directions, say your x direction, and then adding it simultaneously to 30% of your load adding, being applied in the opposite orthogonal direction, such as your z axis. So we've gone ahead and identified 32 different scenarios to be able to fully incorporate all of the orthogonal effects that we're going to need for our particular model. Now I don't need to redefine my seismic loads because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my first eight seismic load cases that we created in our previous video to apply our orthogonal effects. So let's go ahead and get started with that process. I'm going to highlight my first seismic load case. Now this load case is going to represent 100% of my seismic load adding being applied in my x direction with the positive effects of accidental eccentricity along with 30% of my seismic load being added in my z direction with positive eccentricity. So I'm going to highlight this load case. I'm going to come up to my ribbon toolbar and click on my load items icon. Now I've already defined those seismic loads within those other load cases, those first eight. So I'm going to come down here and basically pull those into this load case. So I'm going to take my seismic load in my x direction with positive eccentricity, my seismic load in my z direction also with positive eccentricity, and I'm going to apply a 0.3 factor to the seismic load from the z direction. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the add button and then we'll click close and we can see that we have successfully defined that scenario 100% of my load in my x direction with 30% of my load in my z direction since they're included in a repeat load case basically what that means is those loads will be added simultaneously when the analysis is performed now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rest of our seismic load cases to establish all the rest of the scenarios that we're going to need.
To save time while watching this video, I've taken the liberty of opening up the same exact data set file where all of my seismic load cases to include orthogonal effects have already been created. Now, before we go ahead and analyze this model, let's first take a look at our analysis commands. And to start that process, let's go ahead and click on the analysis page in the workflow page control area. Now what you're going to notice is that a perform analysis command has already been added at the end of the STAD Pro input file for this particular model. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and take a look at some of my command structure that I have in place. Now it is a program requirement that any model that contains IBC seismic load cases in STAD Pro, which are then later on used in repeat style load combinations that you add an analysis command after each individual seismic load case and then reset the stiffness matrix. Now we can see for our particular model that we do fall within that category. We have IBC seismic load cases and we are using those load cases within repeat style load cases later. So let's go ahead and add the appropriate or necessary analysis and change commands to our input file. To add a command at a particular location within the input file, we need to go to the dialog in the data area and select our cursor location. So for this exercise, I'm going to select load case number two because I want to perform an analysis command to appear immediately before this load case. So here's my cursor location. And then I'm going to click on the Define Commands button. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to add a Perform Analysis command after this load case to basically instruct STAD Pro to analyze the structure for this load case individually before it attempts to generate the seismic loads for the next load case. To ensure that it appears at the location in the input file that I'm wanting it to, I'm going to select this After Current checkbox and we'll click on the Add button which is going to add a perform analysis command. Now before I close out of this dialog, I also want to tell the program to add a change command at this location as well. What this does is it will instruct STAD Pro to reset the stiffness matrix to its original form after each of the seismic load cases has been analyzed. Again, I'm going to make sure the after current checkbox is added and then we'll click the add button. So here I perform analysis and the change command. Now by resetting the stiffness matrix, the model reintroduces the stiffness of any members that may have been removed in the previous analysis as a result of a force in the wrong sense for tension only members and it reintroduces the restraint provided by a support that may have been removed in the previous analysis as a result of the reaction in the wrong sense for a compression only spring support. So let's go ahead and click the close button and then we're going to continue on and add a perform analysis and a change command after each of these seismic load cases. Now that we've already incorporated our perform analysis and change commands after each of our seismic load cases, there's one last step in our workflow that we should take a look at. Now in STAD Pro, the set NL command can be used to set the maximum number of primary load cases that will be used in the model. 
It is typically used in a multiple analysis run where more primary load cases are introduced after an analysis has been performed. By issuing this command, STAD Pro is able to allocate By incorporating this command, STAD Pro is able to allocate the appropriate total amount of memory spaces of memory space that it's going to need to complete the final analysis. Now, since we have a multi multiple analysis run and we're introducing additional load cases after a perform analysis command, we will be required to basically set the maximum number of load cases. To find this command, we're going to go to the analysis and design tab in the ribbon toolbar. Select our miscellaneous commands pull down menu, and then we're going to find our set and L command. Now, all we need to do is basically set the maximum number of loads to be greater than or equal to the total number of load cases in our model. We'll go ahead and set the maximum number to 100 for this particular model, and we'll go ahead and click the OK button. Now that we've incorporated all of the requirements for orthogonal effects and completed all the requirements that STAD Pro is going to need for doing a multiple analysis run where seismic load cases are incorporated into repeat load cases later on, we're ready to perform our analysis. Now, after the analysis is performed, we can go ahead and view our output file. And just as we had seen in the previous two videos, we are able to obtain the load calculations for each of the IBC seismic load cases that we included in our particular model. We still only have eight seismic load cases. So from each of these blocks of data, we're going to be able to see our time period that was used in the structure, our CS factors, and also our design base shear. And this will be provided for each of our IBC seismic load cases. You can see that we've performed an analysis for each of the seismic load cases individually. Now after reviewing the output file, we are able to review those loads directly on our screen. So let's go ahead and select one of the load items for one of our orthogonal effect seismic load cases. And what we're going to notice is we're going to notice that loads have been applied in both orthogonal directions for each of the nodes within the model, basically representing 100% of the load in one horizontal direction and 30% of the load in the opposite horizontal direction. Now this concludes a process for incorporating orthogonal effects into your analysis for a model where you're required to generate your seismic loads according to the equivalent lateral force procedure as defined in the IBC standard. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.